Hello, 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 hello everybody and welcome to Healing One. Y'all better get excited. Today is terrific, thankful Tuesday and we are, we're, we're rounding up our series on what mentally strong people don't do. If that sounds like something you want to learn about, stop by and join us today. My name is Dr. Manifa Jones. I'm a transformational life coach and I actually started this Healing One on One journey um, to heal myself, right? Healer, first heal thyself because you cannot pour from an empty cup. So with that being said, the Healing 101 platform was started where we can all together live. Go ahead, my sister Gwen. We can all together live. Go ahead and heal. Right, Mom? So I'm excited about this platform each and every day to talk to you guys Monday through Friday live at five. And in addition to being a transformational life coach, a health and wellness business distributor, I'm also a wife, a mother, a sister, a daughter, and a friend. So welcome to be a part of the Love Tribe. Um, again, we are wrapping up our series on what mentally strong people don't do. Hello. Um, and one of the things we don't do is we don't think that the world owes us anything. We don't believe that we are the center of the universe, right? We are not very selfish. We're selfless, but we're not selfish. We are um, understanding that everything is connected, right? And just like I want my heart to beat, I want yours too. And just like I want a twinkle in my eye, I want yours too. So I don't want to be fearful. I don't wish that upon you either. I don't want injuries. I don't want violence. I don't wish that upon you either. So when we understand that we are all connected, when we look at one another, you know, we are, we all have the eyes, the nose, the ears, and the mouth, but we're all connected as one. And when we realize that, we'll start to treat people differently. And we won't think ourselves highly higher than anyone else or lower than anyone else. We will know that we are all connected. I am finally at a place in my life where I believe in myself, where I love myself, where I'm on my healing journey and I have amazing confidence in my capabilities. But that does not mean that I don't wish, I don't see I don't see you the same. I think each and every one of us have different skills, they have different abilities. Hey Pammy, speaking of gifts and abilities, she is the one. Get excited. Many of us have different skills, abilities, and talents, but that doesn't make mine better than yours because my expertise is in the area of psychology and mental health. That doesn't make me better than you. Your expertise may be in IT technology, which is Chinese to me. I don't have a clue, but that doesn't make you better than me. Myself, I'm not a great mathematician, but my husband is. My husband is a mathematician a mathematician, a scientist. He's an engineer. He has like an engineer, like a really technical, intelligent, genius, walking encyclopedia brain. But I don't. But that doesn't make me less because I don't have the abilities that he does. We actually complement one another. When myself and my son were running the clinic, the life centers, with my son Josiah being the vice president, I was the promoter, the marketer the public relations person. I could go out and I could land any contract, any deal, whether it be with a mom and pop shop or whether it be with a whole hospital, a whole institution, a whole university, it doesn't matter. I could land any deal. But then at the end of the day, I could also sit one-on-one -on -one with families and children and clients that they kind of gave up on ther therapy and realized that people, you know, didn't really understand them. And But I was the person they came to to get success with those cases. That was my gift. But my son, Lord, he was the quality assurance guy to make sure the licenses were in place, to make sure the certifications were in place, to make sure that our medical records were in compliance with state um, laws and regulations, all of the policies and procedures of our employee handbook, making sure that all of our I's was dotted, our T's crossed. That was not my thing. Like we got $10,000 in gift cards on my way back to the office, I made a quick stop. My, my son is calling me, get back to this office. I know what you're doing. I know you, you're, you're being Santa Claus. I did see a mother and five kids and I had, I had $10,000 in gift cards for Christmas. So I gave her some for her kids. It was a woman and five kids. And he was like, no, 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 no. You need to get back. You need to document it. We need to put a letter. We need to make sure that we have accountability for our fund, blah, blah, blah. And he is the person that's a stickler for those type of things. Me, I'm the kumbaya, 
Love everybody. Take care, everybody. Bring everybody in. Take care, everybody. And he's the one that said, we have to document the number of people we're taking care of. We have to make sure we're in compliance with state law. So get excited about everybody has an expertise. So when you understand, Pam, that mentally strong people understand that the world doesn't revolve around them. One thing I'm learning after the pandemic Collaboration is the new currency, in case you haven't heard. Collaboration, baby, is the new currency. We have to collaborate with one another. We have to find out people's strengths and make sure that the people who are doing what they are doing are good at what they are doing and that they love what they are doing and that they have passion and they are compassionate about the people they are serving. Otherwise, they're in the wrong place. I remember when um, my daughter's, her grandmother passed away. So my husband and I went to the graveside um, ceremony to support my daughter, of course. I want to make sure, you know, she's okay. Of course, this is her maternal grandmother, and she also has a paternal grandmother. That's right. Collaboration is a new currency. Get excited. So we went to the graveside, but when we went, there was, of course, it's a whole cemetery, we didn't know specifically where that family was. So we went inside the building where the office was. And we're standing there. And it's, it's a woman working there, right? There's a woman working there. She didn't acknowledge us. She didn't say anything to us. So then we went over to the woman and we said, excuse me, excuse me. Um, we are looking for the, um, the ceremony for um, Mrs. So-and-so. And the woman was nasty. And she was like, look, I'm sick and pit, tired of people coming in here. Here's the mat. They're over here. Go find it. And she kind of put us out. And I'm like, babe, she in the wrong job. When people come here, somebody in their family died. They are grieving. They are very, very, very vulnerable at that state. They, I mean, their family member just died if they're burying someone. And so I was like, thank God. And not, I didn't know the lady, but I'm, I'm not going to say I wasn't grieving. I was grieving for my daughter. But thank God it wasn't me directly. Because imagine I'm grieving, losing a loved one, and this woman is screaming at me. That is, I said, she's in the wrong job. You can't be in a, in a job where people are at their most vulnerable state and you're nasty and rude. So us understanding that the world doesn't revolve around us, it makes us serve more. It makes us show up more, Cheryl. It makes us understand that if we are all connected, I can't cut you. I can't hurt you. I can't deny you. I can't rob you. I can't steal from you. I can't make you afraid. I can't aggravate you. I can't frustrate you. No. Because we are all connected. If we understand the world doesn't revolve around us, you can typically notice people with those types of um temperaments they don't say thank you when someone does something nice for them they think they deserve it if you never met someone and you finally meet them and they pay your way somewhere you can at least say thank you you can at least say thank you or pay or offer them the money but don't assume that somebody owes you something don't assume somebody's supposed to pay something for you don't do that but see, entitled people, those are the people, unfortunately, what goes around comes around. Those are the people who have a lot of challenges, cuz, good to see you. Those are the people that have a lot of challenges because at how you show up in the world, things are going to constantly be taken from you. And then you wonder why you live in lack, but you operate in lack. You think in lack. Lack must show up in your life. We are manifestors and we are creators and we must make sure we are intentional about what we are creating. Mentally strong people understand that the world doesn't revolve around them. They understand that they, you know, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a great opportunity and a privilege to live every day. Somebody didn't wake up this morning. Somebody took their life while I was just speaking. To be alive is a great privilege. So if you are alive and you think this world owes you, 
You think your mama owe you. I heard someone say, I almost slapped them, but I had to be careful. You know, you can't be violent to people. But I heard this young man say, I was telling him, oh, Mother's Day is coming up. What are you doing for your grandmother? His grandmother raised him. And he was like, nothing. She got everything she need. And I said, well, why wouldn't you do anything for her? And he said, she's supposed to raise me. I said, so your mother left you. Your mother didn't raise you. Your mother went to a whole other country and left you here by yourself. Your father was unavailable. And well, she was the next. She should have did it. She was my grandmother. I was like, wow. Wow, wow, wow. When you walk around with the spirit of entitlement, life is not going to treat you well. It is not anybody's responsibility to do anything for you. So make sure you're grateful and thankful. I told you, you guys, we're going to be on a challenge. I want you to start journaling the things that you are grateful and thankful for. And then I want you to actually tell the person, text them and say, I'm grateful and thankful for you because of ABC. Get specific. So many of us are so general. Either we don't say thank you or we don't say why we saying thank you. I can't tell you how many people text me thank you. And I'm like, for what though? For what? <laughs> like why? Right? So guys, mentally strong people, they don't think they're the center of the universe. But they consider themselves a part of the whole. That's what I consider myself. I consider myself that it is my gift to help people understand that feeling good is a strategy. It's going to be somebody else's gift to teach them how to dress. That's not my gift. Oh, Renee says, I'm thankful for your friendship. Pam says, I'm thankful for you. Thank you. Oh, guys, thank you so much. I'm so honored by that. Thank you, guys. And Pammy was right here in Healing One on One Studio on Saturday when we went to see The Woman King, which is a great, great movie speaking about team team and cooperation and collaboration that's a movie all about unity get excited so when we believe the world around revolves around us put number one in the comments if this is you you enjoy talking about yourself more than hearing about other people <laughs> have you ever met someone and they always got to one up you and you be like man I went to Walmart today and I was so excited because I was able to get a discount. Yes, it was good. I was able to get a discount. And then they were like, oh, well, I got mine for free. You ain't see those Tide coupons, buy one, get one free. Then you get all this money off. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, I got this new brown purse. Oh, my girl, I got a Louis Vuitton. Oh, I'm so excited. I got this new car. Oh, you got a Toyota, girl. I don't got me a bit like... like why we always got to one up people? Why we can't just rejoice and be thankful for somebody else's goodness? Can we say congratulations? Can we say I'm happy for you? You're supposed to be just as happy about the success of others as you are about your own success. We have to get with understanding that the world doesn't revolve around us. If everybody was doing their job, the great job that they were created to do for whatever reason some of us believe that we don't we don't deserve to do the job or we're not good enough or we don't look good enough or we're not beautiful enough or we don't speak well enough or we don't dress well enough or we don't live well i don't know what you're thinking but i want you to know if you are not in alignment with your assignment, it's time for you to tap in. The world is waiting for you. The world doesn't revolve around you. The world is waiting for you to say, hello, I'm here to serve and become a part of this movement of elevation, of evolution. This is a revolution of one. Like be the change you want to see in the world. Don't talk about mama. Don't talk about your sister. You be the change you want to see. It's, it ain't about you, sis. I just want you to know. If you didn't know you heard from me today, and I love you, it ain't about you. It's about what are you contributing. It's about what are you doing to bring more unity. Because if you think the world revolves around you, have you ever been with somebody? And they just talk about themselves all the time. 
all the time. Oh, I did this. Oh, I did that. Oh, I did. Listen, that's why we have two ears and one mouth. Listen twice as much as you speak. It doesn't have to be all about you all the time. And if you're the one that's always talking, then you're not getting any positive feedback. You're not hearing what other people are saying. And I think a lot of times people get it twisted on Healing 101 because I tell you, be confident. I tell you, don't have self-doubt. I tell you, listen to your own voice. And I mean that. But that doesn't mean we disregard everything else. No. We take in all the information and then we use deductive reasoning and we use critical thinking skills to come up with our own conclusion. Get excited about that. I didn't say stop listening to the pastor. Stop listening to your mentors. Stop listening to your relatives. No, I never said that. I said listen to yourself. I said, trust yourself. I said, tap into the inner power within that's always been with you. The challenge is, is when we say we cannot think for ourselves and we need our pastor to tell us what to do. We need our therapist to give us advice on the next step. I tell each and every client that I have, I am not here to give you advice. I am not here to judge you. I am not here to be opinionated. I am here to give you some information and I want you to use your knowledge to make a decision on how you are going to respond. You welcome, Gwen. Thank you for your vision and self-love. Thank you. Man, this journey of self-love ain't no joke. I ain't gonna tell y'all. I, I can't even count how many times I don't broke down on this journey. I'm like... I still got that to work on. I thought I was over that. And then somebody say something, prick my little heart. And I'm like, oh, I thought I was healed in that area. I got to go back to work. And I'm like, oh, I'm doing good. I'm happy. I had two weeks of peace, joy, excitement. And then boom, my husband say something I'm like, oh, prick my, I'm like, dang, I thought I, it was over. Okay. It's still in there. Let me, let me keep working. Let me keep working. This self-love journey, it's not easy, but it's worth it. It's not easy, but it's worth it. And when I tell you, man, if you don't go within, you will go without. You'll go without nurturing relationships. You'll go without wonderful business opportunities. You will go without prospering in your health and your wealth if you never take the time to tap into yourself, okay? One of the next ones. You think you're smart enough to succeed without having to work hard. Some people think, oh, I'm cute, so you should just pay my rent. Um, did you see the way my body looks? I shouldn't pay to get my nails and hair done. You should do that. Do you know, it's, it's kind of funny to me. I tell my husband about it. But prior to him, I met men who, if you're going out and they buy you a drink, they were like, you coming home with me, right? Um, I bought you a drink. And I was like, no. I said, no. I said, you bought me a drink. I said, dude, you can't even buy the whole bar <laughs> like, and, and, and get me home with you. What, what are you talking about? You bought me a drink. So you bought me a drink that cost seven, eight, ten, twelve, twenty dollars, $20, and you're supposed to get all of this? Like, stop playing. Like, stop playing. Like, where they do that at? Well, that's what, that's what we do out in these streets. I said, I don't do that. I, I, I don't do that. Like, what are you worth? I tell women, I said, figure out your worth and then add some tax. Get excited. Figure out your worth and then add some tax to it. Baby, you can't afford this. I'm sorry that you have come into contact with women who, because you bought them a liquid in a glass that is gone in a minute, that now you can have their body and you don't even know their name. You don't know their last name. You don't know anything about them. But you met them. You purchased them a liquid. And now, I, I, I'm sorry, guys. I can't comprehend it. I don't understand it. And no, that would be a hard no. So, if, if, so some people think, I don't have to understand your mind to get you and some women fall for that 
I don't have to know what you love. I don't have to know your spiritual goals. I don't have to you know your, your relational family goals. I don't even have to know your past. I don't even have to get to know you to get you. Some people think they can be successful without work. Some people think because they have a cute face or because they know somebody, they connect. Oh, you, I know. They start name dropping. I know Pamela McCollum. You should make sure. But uh, relax yourself. Relax yourself. What, what do you come to the table with? Like, don't even ask me what I come to the table with. I am the whole table. You, you ain't got enough time. So many people think. That they can just move their way through life because they name drop. Or because my family is this. Or because I look like this. And I don't have to apply any hard work. But let me tell you about this self-love, self-care journey, Gwen. Let me tell you, sis, about this self-love, self-care journey. Ain't no name dropping over here. The only name you could drop is God. <laughs> it, it, God, help me. Ain't no name dropping over here. You have to do the work. Self-love don't care how you look. Uh, self cup love don't care how your body shaped healing don't care how much money you have in the bank don't think because somebody got money they heal don't think because somebody got surgery on their body and they look amazing that they on this beautiful self love journey if anything that shows insecurities we always looking at other people and we like i don't have to do the work can can i tell you you have to do the work you have to do the work. But I want you to know that the work is going to redeem the rest of your life. Can I tell you? I know people who are older than me, 60, 70, 80, 90 years old. I've worked with personally that still do not love themselves. They still do not honor themselves. Oh, my child came over and his TV broke and he needed a TV and he just took mine because he didn't want to buy one. I said, what? What just happened? Oh, he said I could just order another one from Amazon and just put it up. I'm 82 years old. Why is your adult 45-year-old son taking your television? Say no. It's a two-letter word. It's a complete sentence. You don't need any reasons. No. You're 45 years old. Why are you taking my TV? Entitlement. The world revolves around me. See, I need a smart TV. Mine's not working. I'm coming to take yours. See, when people think the world revolves around them, they don't treat you kindly. They treat you second best. They disrespect you. And guess what people do? They accept it because they haven't loved themselves yet. They're not on this self-healing journey. So when you are not a people pleaser, when you are no longer trying to control things, you know, I talked to someone today, it was so powerful, and it was basically saying, it's not my problem. If it's not my problem, I'm not inserting myself into the problem. It's not my problem, and now my life is free because I have to analyze, oh, that's my son's problem. That's my sister's problem. Am I saying don't help anyone? No, but I am saying that your emergency is not mine. Oh, yeah, I am saying that. I have an agenda over here. I am focused on my purpose and my destiny. And what that sounds like to me is a distraction. It sounds like to me you need to be focused on your goals and your aspirations. And it sounds like to me that you think the world revolves around you. But I'm not with that. Get excited. <laughs> I'm not with that. I'm with being in alignment with my assignment, Renee. I'm, a being, I'm, I'm with being in alignment with my purpose and my destiny. That's the plan for me. And anything that doesn't fit in there, you know, I'm not really with that. So remember, mentally strong people, they know without a shadow of a doubt that the world doesn't owe them anything. Nothing. I'm, I'm doing a DIY project. I went to the paint store today. The gentleman who worked behind the counter, Josh, a very nice man, gave me his employee 25 percent off Cheryl Williams I was like thank you he didn't have to do that but see I understand though the world don't revolve around me I'm thankful and grateful for every little thing so remember this week we are going to be tapping into our power of gratitude and thankfulness by understanding that the world doesn't revolve around us and if you are a person and you feel like man I've been guilty of that when I need something done, I be like, son, do this. 
mama, I need you. Hubby, boom. Like when I need something done, my, my husband is famous for this and he still hasn't gotten over this yet. And I just told him this week, like he need to, he need to work it out. I could be doing 500 things. This man, I'll be in here. Um, I'm calling some clients, doing some, um, 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 scheduling some, um, schedules for psychosocial assessments. I'm painting at the same time, like putting the first coat on, going back, talking to the clients, doing a session, going back. He'll put some rice on, take 45 minutes. He'll put an alarm on and he'll just leave the house. And I'm like, where are you going? You've been here for all day. Where are you going? Oh, I'm leaving now, but I want some rice. So can you stop? I said, my, I'm in my hands is full of paint. I'm on the floor. I got intake. Something. And he's like, oh, you hear the alarm. Just stop what you're doing. Go take it. What I need you to take it. He still does that. Get excited. So sometimes, sometimes we get caught up and we get guilty and we don't realize the things that we do. We're not considerate of others. It's like, wow, she's doing 14 things. And I'm doing zero. But let me add one more to her. And she'll do 15. Pay 11. She'll do 15. And I'll still be doing zero. Be considerate of other people. The world doesn't revolve around you. It doesn't. And mentally strong people understand that. Mentally strong people find a way to serve. Mentally strong people find a way to help. Mentally strong people find a way for unity. They don't say, it's me, it's me. Take care of my car. Take care of my house. Give me a bag. Buy me some clothes. Give me some food. Do it now. Go to the store. You only like, no, the world don't revolve around you. And mentally strong people, they actually plan. They actually organize because they understand that when because they plan and they organize, their life is easier. You are free from depression and anxiety when you plan and you organize. It's a beautiful thing because you already know what you're going to be doing. Of course, life will, you know, hit you some curveballs. But um, for the most part, you already know what you're going to be doing. And just to let you know, you're not on my agenda, so get excited. Your emergency is not my emergency. I'm on assignment. I'm on purpose. I'm sorry. I used to be that woman. I'd be like, oh, no, let me stop do this. Oh, no, let me stop do that. No, not no more. And I say, I know the world doesn't revolve around me. And I know the world doesn't revolve around you either. Get excited. So anyway, guys, I love each and every one of you. I'm always excited to come to you guys each and every day, Monday through Friday, live at 5. So let's go ahead and end up with our meditation. Remember, if you don't have five minutes, you don't have a life. You don't have five minutes, you don't have a life. Yes, sometimes we have to say no. It's a complete sentence. No excuses needed. Saying no to others is saying yes to yourself. Saying yes to others is saying no to yourself. I just got to a place where I would just try tired of saying no to myself all the time. And I figured I deserved a yes here and there. I said yes. I went out with my girls on Saturday. It was amazing. I had the most amazing, just free, loving, just ha ha ha, laughing time, you know, crying in the movies. It was amazing. It was awesome, you know? And sometimes you got to say yes to yourself. I deserve that. You got to say yes to yourself, right? So, guys, may God continue to shine his face upon you. May God be gracious to you and grant you peace. We forgive ourselves for believing that we should have done better when we didn't know how. And we also forgive others for the same. We are open and ready for things to start going our way. We are asking to receive a message in this physical world today that is a reflection of that. We are open and ready to receive that message. It's already done. It's already done. We already have it. It's already ours. Yay. What you want once you get excited. So, guys, I love each and every one of you. I will see you guys tomorrow, Monday through Friday, live at 5.